this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Had a, a really unusual uh, event happen. This, well, several, but I mean, th this was particularly um, uh, unusual event happened. Uh, Sandy and I were at the Bible bookstore this week, and we were getting some stuff, and I, I needed a couple of books and some things as we were. And uh, as we were paying for things, the clerk said to me, would you be interested in getting our new Bible app for, um, for your computer, your tablet, or your cell phone? And I said, well, what exactly does it do? And he said, well, it has endless uh, sermons and uh, Bible studies and, and uh, sermons from a lot of other people that you could use. And I said, um, and it's a good deal. It's like five ninety five a month, you know. And I said, um, "No, I'm not really interested." And he said, "You're not." And I went, "No." And he said, "Well, if you don't mind me asking, where do you get your sermons?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, "The Holy Spirit," and he looked at me like. Well, um, you know, these other sermons? And I really didn't know how to answer that. I was like, so I'm thinking about it. You know what I'm saying? I went, um, no. <laughs> now, the girl over here, the gentleman's here, I'm in front of him, this girl over here, and she's waiting on someone, but she immediately went. She's not involved in our conversation. There are people standing behind us and they're involved in the conscious. They're all like EF Levin was speaking. You know? <laughs> I said, well, um, this, this may be hard to understand. I, I said, I watch a lot of great preachers and I read a lot, but I don't, um, I don't use other people's sermons. And he was like, Never? And I said, well, no, not in the last seven or eight years. I said, I used to have this thing that was called uh, 52 sermons a week. I, I, I would get that every year. And sometimes I'd look through it and read it, but, you know, that was a long time ago. And I was like, no. He says, well, do you do that every week? And I'm like, uh-huh. I said, don't get me wrong. I, I do read a lot, and I... But I spend a lot of time in the Word of God, and I have things. I said, like, right now, I'm preaching a thing, and defining moments. He went, well, how long have you been preaching that? I said, since January. He was like, what? And, and Sandy says to him, I know he's different, isn't it? <laughs> and he says... And he goes, yeah, but the girl, here's one. <laughs> and uh, most of the people up behind us were older than me citizens. Wow. And, and, they, were, and they were like, they were like perplexed. You know, they had that look of. And so she said, it's a gift. He has. And she goes, trust me, he's got a lot of faults. <laughs> okay, well that wasn't a big secret, was it? But, but she said, but it's a gift. It's his gift. She goes, I, she said, he actually changed his sermon walking 10 feet. And she goes, he goes, really? And I was like, you thought I discovered something. You know, I have. Let God speak. Sit down and shut up. Amen. 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 I mean, that's kind of how we approach things. Which is really funny that I told you all that because I'm stealing the sermon this morning. <laughs> well, not really a sermon. We had a, a, our monthly uh, preachers meeting, and George Mumford from Bible, Grace Bible was uh, he was doing a devotion, and he went to a particular passage, and of course he's doing a devotion, and I'm hearing wow. 
and I couldn't shake it all over the weekend. It's been playing in my head. And I was like, that's, wow. If we can understand this. Can you agree with me certain things go together? Yeah. I mean, just certain things in life. Uh, Forrest Gump, my, one of my favorite movies, he said, uh, Jenny, his girlfriend, wife, whatever, he said, Jenny, Jenny and I go together like peas and carrots. Uh, I think mean, it's a great line. And I, I'm thinking that, wow, steak and a baked potato, that goes together. <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? Fried chicken and mashed potatoes. And if you're going to have mashed potatoes, you've got to have gravy on it. Amen? Okay, all of y'all that want to stop the sermon and go eat, raise your hand. <laughs> I'm kidding. I lied. But there's just certain things that go together. I, it's amazing to me that my friends who live, uh, you guys that live in Georgia and all the other, other places, they all think we live in Disney World. <laughs> well, Sandy has personal parking in Disney World, but that's only because of Brindley. And they go a lot, I go, but, but people think, wow, do you go to Disney? Have you seen how much a ticket is? No. <laughs> We are not in the higher tax bracket. No. Or they either think we live at Disney or the beach. For some reason, they think the East Coast is five minutes away and the West Coast is five minutes away. We can go to either one. And I promise you, in the last ten years, we've been to the beach maybe four times. You know, maybe five times. But when, how many of you live at the beach? I mean, you know, uh, okay, Jenny does. But, but, but you don't live at the beach. You would live there. What I'm saying is, it's so funny. Uh, certain things just go together. And as George was talking about what I'm fixing to share with you, 1 Thessalonians, first chapter, if you want to turn to that. It's right after Colossians, right before Timothy. He was talking about there are things that are twins. They're just paired together. And as he began to read and share this, I thought, oh my God. I didn't see that. I've read this before, but I never saw that. So I'm giving George credit for planting this in my heart and my mind this morning. And the Holy Spirit for saying, yeah, that's what you ought to go with. Because sometimes when somebody gives you really good information, you ought to track that. You know, you ought to go with it. So we think in terms of things that go together. And if we get a couple of these, that, that we truly have reached a defining moment in our lives. 1 Thessalonians, the first chapter. Thess Thessalonians, uh, Thessalonica is the city where he's writing, and this is in Asia Minor. And he had already gone there once, and he's going to go there a second time, but he's writing to them. And uh, he's in Corinth when he's writing this letter to them, but he begins by saying, Paul, Silas, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God, the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you. Now you probably have never known this, maybe some of you have, but if you will read almost every one of Paul's letter, he begins in the introduction with grace and peace to you. It's pretty important, don't you think? There's peace and carrots right there. <coughs> grace and peace go hand in hand. They are joined <coughs> together. Grace, we know, is by definition unmerited favor, as we talked about, but we know that grace is God's favor on us. Not something that we deserve, but something that we get because of His love and His mercy toward us. Without His grace, you and I would be be terribly lost. And without His grace, we would not understand the completeness of how we receive from God. Because as human beings, we would take the approach that <laughs> we deserve it. And there, and there are a lot of people in the body of Christ who think simply because they made a profession of faith, they deserve God's grace. You got the blood of Jesus Christ applied to your life. I got the blood of Jesus Christ applied to my life. That alone 
is all grace will ever need. Would you think God stops there? <laughs> Absolutely not. He says, because of that blood, you can be healed. Because of that blood, you can be financially blessed. Because of that blood, I will honor all of my promises I have ever made to you. As long as you don't doubt. So walking in grace is receiving grace and then receiving peace. On top of that, I still am convinced that the world in its struggle to be happy is really looking for peace. Wouldn't it be a, a great day to wake up and know there were absolutely no deaths because of selfish ambition or desire? But the entire world lived in peace. In the 60s we did this, peace. <laughs> what we really meant was, don't bother us, we want to do what we want to do. <laughs> that's, that's, you know, that's, that's what we really meant. I mean, we did it. Come on. We just want to get high and pass that thought. And just, oops, did I say that? <laughs> Sorry. We just want to be able to do drugs and we want to be able to do our own things and we want to be able to run around and da 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 da. The world hasn't changed any, has it? I mean, you know, that's what Adam and Eve were dealing with in the garden. <laughs> We just want to do our own thing. We want to do what we want to do. We want to do, we want to, we want to be like you. So, peace in the Hebrew, you know the word, it's salam. It's actually salam, but it, we say shalom. But maybe what you didn't know is that shalom peace means complete. It doesn't mean absence of conflict. See, we think that's what peace is. Absence of conflict. How many, just, I'm curious, I don't know the answer to this, I could probably find out, but I don't know, maybe somebody brilliant here already knows, but I wonder how many peace accords uh, uh, Israel and their Arabs have signed. <laughs> Signing that document seems to be working really well. Don't you think? Seems to be in our own country, in our own city, in our own families, we're striving for peace. But here's the key. You will never, we will never get to the complete without the grace. Grace is not applied. We will never get to the peace. Because grace allows you to make mistakes. That's the whole theory of grace. You mess up, I got you covered. Because the blood of Christ is applied to your life. I mean, we don't live in a situation where if we sin, God goes, whoops, sorry, you messed up. You don't get the grace anymore. We'd all be in trouble. Well, at least y'all would be. <laughs> Can you imagine? But that is our theology. Our theology toward one another is not you're covered by grace. Our theology is if you sin, you're going to hell. Carrie Mitchell and I were just talking about this the other day. People in the church treat people like they're in and out of hell all the time. You sin, you're out. You're a pitcher. You sin, you're out. You're a pitcher. I believe in repentance for all those that are sitting around and arguing with me at the moment. But I do believe this. Greater is the grace that is applied in our life than our ability to sin. Amen. Let me say that again. Greater is the grace that is applied to our life than our ability to sin. Amen. 